Oh goodness. So what was COVID like for us? Uh, we had to pull over three times in one hour. Really miss tasting food. <laughs> <laughs> We're Marissa, Nathan, Hensley, and JJ. We sold our house in 2015 and moved into an RV full time to live a life of less junk, more journey. Life is a journey. Let go and get going. So what's up fellow journeyers? We went back and forth and back and forth about how to do this video because this topic is a tough topic and we've kind of danced around, should we talk about it, should we not? But we get so many questions uh, from you guys about what is it like out there RVing during the pandemic? What are the campgrounds like? What are the destinations like? Is it, is it safe? Is it a good idea? Am I putting myself at risk? Am I putting other people at risk by doing this? And uh, we hope to answer those questions during this video and also give you guys sort of a background of our journey with COVID. Um, as from the time we discovered, I don't know if anybody really like totally knew what was going on in the beginning from the time we discovered it until today. But today, where we're currently at, so this is a thousand trails Orlando and I gotta take the trash. So 7.30 a.m. You kind of get a feel for the uh, hustle and bustle here at the campground. <laughs> campgrounds or at least a good campground at least are all about having activities that are outside uh here they've got pickleball courts shuffleboard playground for the kids swimming pool i think there's a couple other things over there we never get to because we, we never get that far with the kids you do have indoor spaces like this you know get a laundry restrooms I mean, you're supposed to wear masks at those indoor spaces including the office over here as well and you don't have to use any of these things you can totally come, if you're self-contained like us, you come with your own bathroom, your own washer and dryer, your own home, you can stay well, <laughs> well away from anybody within six feet. And you can definitely practice social distancing in this kind of environment. Now this, this is an experiment in flexibility. Uh, much like RVing could be an experiment in flexibility as well, but like, do we know if we're gonna love this or not? No. We've seen a ton of these. Like there's one right over here, this open range has one. Just sitting right here, I can see that they have one that's unzipped right over here. I mean, you're seeing more and more of these for a reason. I don't know exactly what you call these screen porch awning things. But basically you attach it to the awning arm at the top. So you don't have to like unstake it every time the wind starts blowing or anything like that. You've got a zipper that comes out. It detaches right here. This stays on the awning all the time. And so you just uh, roll the awning up with that whenever you need to. So I've got an automatic alert set up on my phone if the wind gets higher than 12 miles an hour. Uh, with this, I'm thinking I might bump it up to 15 or something like that. Um, so am I gonna leave it out no matter what? Just because it's staked in the ground? No, <laughs> because I don't want it to pull the awning out from my RV because we've now created the sort of outdoor space. Part of the, one of the issues we talked about was having the light floors inside of the RV in this captures a lot of that dirt before it makes it into the RV. Um, the second thing it does, it's sort of a defined space where like JJ, maybe Hensley as well, but mainly JJ, we're like JJ, do not leave <laughs> the mat, play on the mat. And then the third thing it does, which is pretty cool, it gives us sort of an outdoor space. It extends the square footage outside. We even had, a, we watched the Super Bowl out here actually, uh, just us, uh, we <laughs> set up the sheet, hung out, you know, it's just a flexible space. So what does our COVID journey look like? Actually last year when everything started to happen, and we were actually in Florida as well. We were farther north from Orlando toward the Panhandle area. Do we head north or do we just keep staying in the campgrounds we already have booked? Because this, this was, I don't know, early March as when the, all this was starting to happen in 2020. Ultimately we opted and we said, look, no, let's just, let's just head. We don't know what's gonna happen. What's gonna shut down? What's gonna be out of stock? Let's get what we need. And then let's head north to Tennessee. But now a year later, Things are definitely not the same. Um, I don't know if they'll ever be the same again, but at least with RVing, you do have this, again, flexibility <laughs> to be have somewhat of a sense of normalcy. Uh, you know, we're actually not heading north back to Tennessee because there's a pandemic going on. We're heading south toward the Florida Keys. Now it's different. Uh, 
If we stop at a gas station, it's gonna be totally different. <laughs> if we stop to eat somewhere, it's totally different. If we go inside at all, it's totally different. But if you're looking for a sense of normalcy, maybe routine and things feeling semi like they did before the pandemic, campgrounds and RVing can give you the flexibility to do those things. Because people are out definitely still camping. This campground's 100% full. Most campgrounds we checked, 100% full. Like it is, it is, <laughs> 2020 was a crazy year uh, for RVing. And I don't know that 2021 is gonna slow down in any way. You what? I got something to ask. What do you got to ask me? Um, do you know where your five minute drying super glue is? Why do you need it? Because um, another thing broke. Another thing broke? Uh huh. Um, um, it's a bow off a glove. A bow <laughs> fell off a pink glove. Was it glued on here before? Uh -huh. Maybe they didn't have my five minute magic glue. Maybe that was the problem. Is this everything that goes with that? Are you wearing that today? On the travel day? <laughs> Eat it. All the bear fathers were catching fish for their children. Yes. Can you be a grasshopper? You jump. Whoa, look at that grasshopper. Get ya! <laughs> ah! So we left Florida last year, like early mid-March-ish, and, and opted just to go back to our home base in Tennessee, where we basically hunkered down like a lot of you guys for three, four months. I think that's one of the big things that's changed with full-time RVing with COVID is like, whereas before, if something was wrong, the weather, the people around you, the campground, whatever, you just up and leave, go to a new spot. But it's actually gotten a little more rigid in a sense that a lot of RVers have either, you know, they, some have come off the road that have done it for a while, just because they don't want to have to look for a place to stay. And then some have done like we've done. We have a home base, water, electric, sewer. We can go back there, which is what we went to in Tennessee. I think even just having a plan B, whether that's just yeah. a family member you've talked to and set up a situation that would work for you, um, a driveway to park in, a flat plate piece of land um, that could be family, friends, anybody, just having that sense of like a plan B in case of an emergency has really just lifted a weight off our shoulders. We had done that and put that in place before COVID had hit, just because that was something that was on our hearts. And then when COVID hit, it was just such a relief to have that security that like somewhere we could go and hunker down. Um, and we had no idea that it would be useful so quick. Is hunker down just like a Southern term or does everybody say that? But hunker just seems like a Southern term, I don't know. <laughs> I think one of the big things, um, and you'll see our video today, like we'll hardly encounter anybody in person. That is not like a strange day. Like if you don't want to encounter anybody RV living, you really don't have to encounter that many people RV living. <laughs> today, I don't know. I might encounter, I don't know if we'll even go inside here or not. And you know, we'd wear masks and go in, but I don't know if we will or not. We're just gonna let the kids kind of stretch their legs. And then once we get to the campground, I might have to interact with one person in order to check in. And that's, that's probably gonna be it today. Wow. <laughs> There you go. There you go. Whoa. <laughs> One of the great benefits of traveling with an RV is we always have our home with us. We stop and we have our own restroom, our own kitchen, so we can pull off and take a break, do lunch, and not even have to go in any restaurants or any public restrooms which i think is a super cool advantage of having your rv your home on wheels with you as you travel so that's definitely been a benefit for us
hopefully this is our last stop for Pinnacamp. Uh, it has been a long day. We got a little bit of a slow start, which in turn made us stop for lunch at a weird time, which in turn made us hit Miami rush hour, which in turn made us even later. But, but the main thing that happened that has never happened, I've had to pull over on the interstate once, maybe twice in my life. Yeah, that's a lot of cars, isn't it, buddy? Uh, we had to pull over three times in one hour. So the first time, I stood on the what it was. All I know is like, I started to get tail whip on the fifth wheel like out of nowhere. We've had that with our travel trailer, like the Airstream before. But you don't used to get tail whip with a fifth wheel. And so it started moving back and forth. I start slowing down, I get off on the shoulder, I look at it, you know, tires are fine, axles look fine, I can't see anything wrong. So we just keep going and it never did it again. So I don't know, it was like seven mile power winds today. I mean, so I don't, it could have been a gust of wind. It was really weird. Uh, second time, I had two different guys flagging me down, just like honking their horn, pointing to the back. I'm like, okay, all right. So, so I slow down, I pull over. This is what I tried to film. Oh goodness. Oh wow, okay, that's what's going on. Okay, that's not good. Okay, I gotta get to a safer spot. There's just not a safe spot to pull over, it seems like, around anywhere around Miami. Like, um, and I didn't know if I could get to the exit or not because I didn't know what was wrong. But so I take the sewer hose, I throw it in the back of the truck. I'm like, all right, let me see if I can get to an exit. Well, I don't even make it to an exit. Half a mile down the road, I look at my rear view and that messed up, busted sewer hose is dangling on the side of the truck with its metal just, you know, doing its thing on the side of the truck about to fall out. So I see an off ramp, it says 25 miles an hour. I pull off at that off ramp thinking, okay, this isn't ideal, but it's 25 miles, no. Like people are coming off this ramp like 80 miles an hour honking their horns at me I mean, I'm over as far as I can get so yeah all that happened. So here we are We're at our second service plaza and we're hitting rush hour So we are trying to get the pinna camp today and this bird apparently has decided just to take over. Hey, go go It's a strange day. That's got to be some sort of omen or something. Oh my goodness. We made it to the Keys, to our site. We're getting set up. It was a long day in the car with the kids, but we're so excited to be in the Keys. I tried to get JJ to sleep all day because usually he takes a good two hour nap during the day and our plan was for him to sleep in the car. And of course he fought it all day. And then as soon as we show up at our campsite, this is what happens. much easier to get epic b-roll with the uh, french press than the coffee pot. <laughs> I think JJ is just now waking up. He's usually up at 8 o'clock. It's like after 9. He is so exhausted from yesterday. You still waking up? Let me give you some space. All right, I'll back away. So getting just a little bit of sleep can make a world of difference. And so for all the things that happened yesterday, it taken us almost eight hours to get here instead of six. We really didn't, from a social distancing perspective, we really didn't encounter that many people. I thought I would encounter one person coming into the park and I, we were coming in late. So we got a gate code and we didn't encounter anybody coming into the park. And now as far as our COVID journey, we locked down our home base in Tennessee for about four months until we started to see that Michigan was opening up in July, especially state parks, which is one of the main things we wanted to see. And the thing you guys that watched that video probably heard us saying over and over was like, is it ideal? No. Is it perfect? No. But is it still better than sitting still in Tennessee or wherever your home state might be? We felt like it was worth getting out, seeing what we could see. And what we ran into Michigan is what we're running into in Florida and what will probably be the case 
I don't know, <laughs> who knows how long. <laughs> but you've got stuff like this, uh, you know, here at this state park, typically have a little aquarium. They have some indoor, like a mini museum kind of thing going on, a visitor center. Yeah, it's all closed. And so to us, I think when you're looking at these routes, planning these routes, deciding where to go, because this is a big part of why we decided to go where we did in Michigan uh, with COVID, what we're choosing to do is typically as outdoorsy stuff as we can because we know if we go somewhere that's a big city we go somewhere that's got a lot of indoor stuff first of all i don't know that we want to be around <laughs> that to start with but even so there's a really good chance that a lot of that is not going to be open it's not going to be available and if it is it probably wouldn't be the same experience for the family the one place we have gone since the pandemic that i would consider like a high traffic ish area uh, but if you're gonna go anywhere that could potentially have large amounts of crowds. Uh, somewhere like Disney, the three things that stand out a lot, uh, number one, the crowds way down, I think are only allowing like 35% capacity. <laughs> number two, Disney went way all out as far as safety. <laughs> First goodbye and ice converse. You will never see them again. Make goodbye to these nice strangers as well. And then thirdly, like at Animal Kingdom, JJ was totally obsessed. <laughs> totally obsessed with the animals. <laughs> I think with Disney, it is different during the pandemic, the experience as a whole. But the one thing that I think about it that was great was that it's the, the wait in the lines is like crazy low. I mean, it was like 15 minutes to get into stuff that usually took two hours. And so we'd go in and, you know, nine, 10 o'clock and two o'clock, we're like, I think we wrote everything. Yeah. <laughs> like, I think we're done. So we decided to come back to Tennessee and be home for the holidays. During that time frame, we had a, a family member that had surgery. And so I was helping that person recover from surgery. It was hard to see any of the other symptoms arise. They were mm. just recovering, saying they weren't feeling well, but that's pretty typical coming coming from a procedure um, and then slowly they started exhibiting symptoms uh, and then we realized our whole family had been exposed to COVID at that point. So what was COVID like for us? I was the first one in our family that started showing symptoms. For me, originally, I started out with um, a headache, then that slowly progressed to starting feeling almost like um, maybe allergy type mm. symptoms or a cold. And then I did end up developing a fever about three days after my symptoms show up. Um, so at that point, we're kind of figuring out what's going on. Um, and then I end up losing my taste and smell. And so that was like the telltale sign for sure. Mm. Traveling for us was actually less exposure than mm -hmm. being in our normal environment with our family, with our friends, with, with our church, with our community, like the levels of transmission were so much greater in Tennessee. We got it when we got back to Tennessee from Michigan, not while we're RVing Michigan. I know, for, I know for me, I, I did pretty well with COVID. I would say the biggest symptoms were just being so tired, exhausted. It's very encouraging that you said that we were on your hearts because we really need it right now. I really miss tasting food. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, Nathan said I got pretty mean. I don't know, he said. Meaner, no, no, she, um. He, we called, I told him, I mean, it was like COVID brain because it did make me feel like just very irritable and not myself for sure. Yeah, it was It was a little scary for me because I'd never been that sick. <coughs> <coughs> <sighs> It's hard to have long conversations when you got stuff going on in your lungs and you're coughing and you're sleeping 16 plus hours a day. I am now on the uh, the back end, hopefully, of this. It's like day 11 for me, and I just now feel like maybe I'm kind of on the back end where I'm still coughing. I still had a temperature yesterday. <clears throat> I don't have one yet today, and I can say this is the sickest I've ever been because I just I don't 
I don't get sick. Like, I don't remember the last time I had a temperature. I know it had to have been decades because I can't remember it. You know, usually every season one of the kids or somebody in the family gets sick and I just, I don't get it. Like, I just keep moving along like every year. Kind of thought that's what might happen with this when I saw that everybody was getting sick with it, which how we, how are we going to isolate? <laughs> <laughs> in 400 square feet anyways but yeah i got it and uh <clears throat> i don't know it's just <clears throat> it's hard to even talk <laughs> i'm gonna take a break i'm really glad that we got through that and everybody recovered and it was it was a, a little bit of a recovery it took a couple weeks three weeks before mm -hmm. everybody yeah. was um back to themselves um so it was a it was a pretty kind of emotional time to get through that. So we had COVID in Tennessee, we spent the holidays in Tennessee, and then we wanted to get away from the cold weather and go to warm weather, and so we headed south down to Florida. Now the struggles and the things with Florida that are different from Michigan are that Florida, for one, you've got a lot more RVers coming down to one congested area, um, and so there is, and it's a real struggle, we're still dealing with this, it is difficult to find places to stay with campgrounds. Not impossible, uh, but it is difficult. <laughs> I wouldn't let let the thought of him saying it gets crowded and congested because the campground is full, but we still have a huge yard, our own space, our mm -hmm. own home. And so it's just been really nice to be enjoying the warm weather and then still being able to, to have whatever level of comfort. I think when you're in colder weather in enclosed space around familiar people who may have multiple levels of transmission versus being in a warmer environment, uh, again, this is us. This is not us saying what to do or what not to do, um, but this has been our mindset with the way that we've moved in our RV versus being in a warm environment where we can be outside more and we're not encountering as many people as far as multiple levels of transmission in an indoor space. Uh, to us, that choice of a lifestyle with RVing has been worth it. And on paper, or maybe even when you vocally say it, it, it may come out as like, well, RVing, or traveling in an RV is is crazy dangerous. I think there are things you need to pay attention to. It can be crazy dangerous, just like anything, depending on where you go and what you do. But if you are cautious about where you go and you think through where you go and you follow the weather to where you're not you know, indoors as much, um, I think it can be a very safe way to travel if you're gonna travel. And even if you're not gonna travel, you have the flexibility with RVing to choose where you go, what you do, and what level exposure you have to other people. If some of you are extroverts, like this has been, this has been tough. I mean, I get it, you know, Zoom and phone calls and, you know, <laughs> emails and texts. But if you're, if you're wanting to, in a safe way, be able to talk to people or meet people and still keep six feet away, be outdoors, be in the sunlight. I don't know if there is a safer way to meet and engage with people and feel a sense of community than RVing. Maybe it's been all extroverts that have started RVing in 2020. A lot of people have started doing it. We did a live chat on Patreon where we got in more in depth um, right after we're, we actually did this during our recovery, yeah, <laughs> our yeah. recovery with COVID. So it was very, very <laughs> fresh, very informative. So if that's something that you guys would like to check out, we would love to have you join Team Journey on Patreon. Mm -hmm. And we do a live chat monthly. We do travel maps. And if you want to see our travel map from Michigan, we had an absolute blast. Mm -hmm. Um, that travel map will be on Patreon as well. We also do real-time video updates, which I'm not sure if this will come up later, but we had a flat tire on the way to this campground. Marissa, video that, uh, put that on Patreon. But that's been our experience with COVID-19 and the pandemic over the last year. Uh, until next video, we'll see you guys on the next journey.